if you do not have a keyboard attached to your whatever you're running your QML on, hey, you're lucky. You can sit back now and not listen in because this is for those with a keyboard. If you, on, a, on the other hand, do have a keyboard, here is something truly important. Namely, how do you cope with several elements that would like focus? How do you distribute it about, around? We saw that when we talked about the keyboard in a video much earlier on. We saw that we would set the focus property and there was this active focus property. But if a subcomponent of a component is the one that really should have keyboard input, how do we handle that? That's what we're going to learn in this video. I prepared an example for you here already. So you can see we have a two, two uh, rows here. First name, uh, line edit, where I can type my first name. And I can go over and press the clear button, except that that hasn't been implemented. But I can press uh, right arrow and enter, and that will clear the element. And Similar, I can go down to this element here, I can go up again, I can jump between the two with up and down arrow. But let's see what the, the whole user interface look like. I got a column, two input fields, they got uh, some names and, and focus true on this one here, the title, first name, key navigation down, that was what allowed me to press down and up to jump between the two. And I do some anchoring here. The key or the input field that QML looked like this. At the top, I got an item. So an item at the top, you've seen that many times, but I will change that shortly so that that's the whole key of this, uh, this example. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. At the top, let me just run the application. Let me just run the application. There we are. At the top, I got a rectangle. That's a rectangle that you see around everything here. Um, it is visible whenever it has active focus, this element here. Then we've got a row, and that's the row of uh, these elements in here. There is the text front here, there's a rectangle that is uh, that has a bit of border and some border color and it's light steel blue. That's the thing that gives you the feeling of a true line edit here. And then we've got the, uh, the rectangle for the button over here with the text clear. And uh, I've got key navigation left to input and up here, I've got key, navigation, right to clear button. So that's how that is set up. Now, we have one problem, though. And the problem is that whenever I press arrow down, and let's just go back to the, the code over here in the input field, uh, key, navigation, down, go to last name, key, navigation, up, go to first name. So whenever I press the arrow down, I should jump from this input field to that input field. And, uh, that's what it looks like here. I press arrow down, now. It did give me the focus on the next input field, but it did not give me focus on what really matters for me because, hey, I did not get any text on my user interface. I only get text when this element in here has the focus. Let's look at the, the code again for my text element. Um, text clear button, I would like to say, hey, focus, colon true. Will that help me? Let's see. Mm, no, that did not help me. Because when I press arrow down, I give focus to the element, but that's the item at the topmost. I would like to really send the focus further down into the element. So how do I do that? Well. I do that by, well, first of all, let's just go and look at this in Gamma Ray. Gamma Ray comes up and I will not use the picker tool this time. I'll use this tool here for redirect input because now I can actually just click on the user interface and the input is redirected. If you look at the, uh, there's this symbol up here that, that looks like a light bulb. That is the one that has a keyboard input or input focus. When I click on this one here, you can we can search for focus over here, and you can see active focus true, focus colon, well, nothing. Well, checked. But now when I click on that element down there, I still have the, the original element checked, so you can see active focus false and focus unclicked. So obviously one element in the user interface at any given point in time 
can accept the user input. It would be, uh, to say the least, a very interesting user interface if I could type into two line edits at the same time. So the solution to this problem is to make the whole component a focus scope. Let me show you what that looks like. So instead of an item up here, I will make it a focus scope. Making it a focus scope means that this whole component allows an element to have focus even though it's not the active focus. And when this component gets the focus, then it should redirect that focus, that active focus, mind you, to redirect that active focus down to the element that already have focus true. So now when I run this example, first, let me try and run it. I press arrow down now. You see it jumps straight into the line edit part, arrow up jumps into the line edit part exactly like I would like it to do. And if I run it in gamma ray, you will notice that my input, let me just give it, give this one the keyboard focus. Now it has the keyboard focus. You'll notice that I got a light bulb next to this input here. And I got a light bulb next to that input there. But this one is the one that is highlighted. When I click this, just keep your eyes on this light bulb. I'll click on the other line edit. You can see it's still indicate that there is focus on this element, but the light bulb went off, meaning it doesn't have active focus. So if we take this element here and we search for focus over here, then you can see focus is still checked, but the active focus is false. Now when I click that element there, active focus is true and focus is checked. Where should you place your, your, your uh, focus scope? Well, Whenever you have a component, it makes a lot of sense to put the focus scope at the top of the component because then you can reason about focus within that component. This completes this module. We started out quite a few videos ago looking at how could we create our own components. End of cut and paste. And we looked at our components, how we could add properties, how we could add signals. And we had a long video that I hope that you appreciated where we looked at how do we specify the size of our components. We had a very short video on local variables, and then we had that important video that I hope that you'll put under your pillow and re-watch every night until you remember and you do loaders in your application. Because loaders, as I said, will go from being very slow startup to being reasonable startup. And then we ended talking about keyboard here with focus scope. The next module is going to be a very short one. We're going to talk about states and the state machine framework that is on the QML level. Not the real state machine, just states and transitions. But they are very useful, again, to program uh, in a non-imperative, namely in the declarative way. And then we'll also see one of the beautiful things in QML, namely animations. So stay tuned for that. I'm Jesper Peterson from Kidai.